and yet instantly the United States was able to say that it was ISIS and it wasn't Ukraine. I'd like to know more about why the United States makes that claim. I'd be interested in that. And I think everybody should be asking that question before they embrace the narrative put out by the United States. Ask the question why they put that narrative out in the time frame that they had. I'm far more comfortable in embracing the Russian narrative. Tonight's report, informed by the insights of Scott Ritter, former U.S. military analyst, delves into the terror that gripped Moscow. We explore the shadows of an attack that not only shattered peace, but also raised questions about global security and the silent wars in our midst. Join us as we uncover a narrative woven with intrigue, resilience, and the unseen battles that define our time. In the veiled shadows where terror sought refuge, the vigilant eyes of Russian law enforcement pierced through the darkness, bringing to light a vast and intricate network of malevolence. In a remarkable feat of intelligence and operational acumen, 11 suspects were detained within the storied confines of Moscow, each arrest peeling away layers of a meticulously planned conspiracy. Far from the Russian heartland in Turkey, the sweep broadened, ensnaring an additional 40 individuals tied to this sprawling web, each one a thread in the larger tapestry of terror that was painstakingly woven with intent and purpose. This marked a critical juncture culture in the investigation, a testament to the unwavering resolve of those who stand guard over peace and security. The operation, underscored by the silent hum of technology and the strategic cadence of boots on the ground, underscored not just a moment of triumph, but a resounding message to the architects of fear. The light of justice, once kindled, will relentlessly seek out the shadows. With the network's tendrils now exposed to the scrutinizing gaze of justice, our narrative unfolds further. We pivot towards the ominous whispers that once foretold this calamity, unraveling the tapestry of warnings and intelligence that hinted at the storm looming on the horizon. As we navigate through the dim corridors of forewarning, the story of a tragedy foreseen yet unstoppable begins to emerge, casting a stark light on the challenges of preempting the shadows of terror. Beneath the vibrant pulse of Moscow, a sinister shadow loomed, foretold by the stark warnings from the U.S. Embassy. Dispatches once shrouded in the ambiguity of intelligence chatter now resonate with a chilling clarity. These cryptic alerts, emerging from the depths of diplomatic channels, hinted at a malevolent gaze fixed upon the heart of Moscow. It was a narrative pieced together from whispers of caution, each warning a thread in a tapestry of premonition that, in hindsight, paints a grim tableau of missed signals and looming disaster. In the days leading up to the tragedy, the embassy's advisors grew increasingly urgent, a crescendo of concern that pointed to public squares and crowded venues as nodes of potential peril. These bulletins, though cryptic, carried the weight of forewarning, crafting a mosaic of intelligence that perhaps arrived too late to avert fate's course. The public spaces of Moscow, pulsing with life, stood unknowing on the precipice of calamity their vibrancy captured in stark contrast to the shadow of threat that hover unseen. It was a juxtaposition of life's continuity against the backdrop of looming chaos, a reminder of the fragility that comes with unforeseen menace. With the backdrop of these four warnings setting a somber stage, our journey leads us into the heart of the enigma. Who were these specters of destruction, and from where did they emerge? As we peel away the layers of this unfolding mystery, we venture into a realm where motives are obscured and allegiances are as fluid as shadows at twilight. In the labyrinth and tale of the Moscow tragedy, the cast of shadowy figures emerges not as mere foot soldiers of chaos, but as pawns in a game that transcends borders and nationalities. Initial intelligence pointed towards Ukraine's shadowy recruitment of individuals from Tajikistan, a move veiled in secrecy and strategic ambiguity. However, the plot thickens beyond these early assumptions, revealing a narrative fraught with deeper, more intricate layers of deceit and subterfuge. These architects of despair, it seems, operated within a web of complexity that belied the simplicity of their apparent origins. Their paths, crisscrossing through the hard lands of Eastern Europe into the vast expanses of Central Asia, hinted at a network both sprawling and meticulous in its reach. The operation, marked by covert communications and secretive rendezvous, unfolded with a precision that challenges our understanding of loyalty, identity, and the clandestine machinations that fuel such acts of terror. As the investigation delves deeper, each uncovered thread of communication, 
Each surveilled movement across the shadowed roots of this network adds to a tapestry of intrigue that suggests a plot not just executed by distant mercenaries, but orchestrated by minds cloaked in an even darker shroud of mystery. As the veil lifts on the true complexity behind the attack's origins and motives, history's mirror reflects back at us, revealing the timeless nature of deception in the chess game of international relations. This journey through the shadows not only questions the very essence of allegiance and entity, but also beckons us to explore further the cyclical nature of conflict and manipulation that history so often recounts. Our journey through the annals of history is shadowed by the insights of Scott Ritter, whose foresight into the intricate webs of international relations illuminates the darker corners of global politics. Ritter's analysis reveals a concerning prediction, the unseen hand of the CIA in Ukraine, targeting the fragile seams of Russia's unity, particularly among the Chechen and Muslim Russian communities. He warns of a period marked by strife, pointing to a calculated destabilization aimed at eroding the bonds that have been meticulously forged within Russia's diverse fabric. In the context of Ritter's cautionary words, we are reminded of the echoes of past manipulations as vulnerable groups find themselves once again at the crossroads of geopolitical agendas. Yet, against this backdrop of potential discord, the resilience of these communities shines brighter, emerging as a testament to the enduring spirit of unity that defies the specter of division. As Ritter forewarns of challenging times ahead, with Ukraine's resolve potentially leading to a tumultuous period for Russia, it is the lessons of history and the strength of a nation united in diversity that offer a beacon of hope. As we absorb the weight of Ritter's predictions, our narrative finds a focal point in the present, Moscow, a city emblematic of Russia's complex tapestry of cultures and histories. Amidst the flickering candlelight of vigil and the solemnity of national reflection, the spirit of unity and resilience stands as a defiance against the shadows of external influences. It is here in the collective heart of a nation that we glimpse the potential for a future defined not by division, but by the strength of shared purpose and peace. In the aftermath of darkness, a nation's heart beats in unison echoing through the words of President Putin. His address, a solemn vow to the souls lost in a clarion call for unity, resonated across the vast expanses of our country. Declaring the day of national mourning, he galvanized a collective spirit of resilience and determination. The promise of retribution against those who dared to disrupt our peace was not just a vow to the victims, but a pledge to every citizen. The scenes of mourning that unfolded across our nation, from the condolate vigils that illuminated the night to the flags that stood at half-mast, were a testament to the strength found in solidarity. In these moments of reflection, we not only mourn the lives we lost, but also reaffirm our commitment to stand united, undeterred by the specter of terror. Amidst the solemn echoes of our nation's resolve and mourning, the canvas broadens, revealing the intricate tapestry of international intrigue and geopolitical dynamics. This tragedy, while deeply personal, transcends borders, prompting a global dialogue. Let us journey forth, exploring the far-reaching implications of this event on the world stage, where solidarity and conflict converge in the quest for peace. In the shadow of this profound tragedy, the world finds itself at a crossroads, where the delicate threads of international relations are both strained and strengthened. This event, deeply rooted in the heart of Russia, extends its reach far beyond, sparking a cascade of diplomatic maneuvers and intelligence sharing. The tapestry of global politics, rich with the hues of national interests and regional security, now incorporates a new pattern, one that demands an unprecedented level of cooperation and dialogue. Countries previously divided by ideologies and territorial disputes find common ground in the face of a shared threat. Navigating the complex dance of diplomacy with a renewed sense of urgency, behind closed doors, alliances are forged and strategies are crafted, aiming to counter the nebulous web of terrorism that respects no borders. The global stage, once fragmented by conflicting agendas, now echoes with a unified call for action, seeking not only to address the immediate threat, but to preempt future crises. This pivotal moment in international relations underscores a harsh reality. The battle against terror is a global endeavor, requiring a symphony of nations to orchestrate a coherent response.